All right, we're going to get started. We will look at our target and all that in just a minute. We're going to just start getting warmed up here. And let's do that this way. What am I going to have to delete today? Is this the same one every day? Yes. I've kind of stopped paying attention to it. Okay. All right, so we're going to warm up with... Uh, there we go. Start with that. check this over right here. All right. To help you out, you might have drawn the dinosaur head. Okay. Five times three is 15. We put the five, we carry the one. Okay. Five times eight, 40 plus one more, 41. So your top row should be 415. All right, so we're done multiplying by the five, and we're going to put the dinosaur egg right there. That's the main reason we do that dinosaur head is to remember that dinosaur egg, okay? So if, you're, if you know that's one of your weaknesses right now that you forget that zero, draw that, okay? Four times three? Twelve. Twelve. We put the two, carry the one, okay? Four times eight? Thirty-two. Thirty-two. Plus one more, 33. So your second row should be 3,320. Okay. And then we add those up. 3,735. Okay. All right. What are your questions for me about this? question. That's a comment. Okay. All right. So let's also warm up with one of these. We don't want to forget our good friend division here. Okay. So give that one a try. You are practicing, practicing some Valuable skills here. Okay. Making you stronger. My brains are gonna be so big by the time we leave fourth grade that you won't fit out the door. I don't want to fit out the door. Yeah, I'm just kidding. I know you can't leave fourth grade if you can't fit out the door. So. Wait, then how are we gonna go to fifth grade? Huh? How are we gonna go to fifth grade? If yeah, I exactly. can't fit through the door. The brain's gonna grow, but your head's not gonna get bigger. <laughs> what you know here?
you have time, go ahead and check your answer. Okay, go ahead and check it, see if we got it. We get started as well. If you're still working it, work it. <clears throat> Check your answer when we get done. All right, can I get a five out of four? No. No, and so I'm going to need to grab that digit right next door to look at a little bit bigger number. How many fives can I get out of 40? What's the most, yeah, don't yell it out. What's the most fives I can get out of 40? Yeah, because five times eight is what? 40. 40. I said 40, didn't I? I meant 42. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess I was giving you a little hint there. Okay. So we subtract and bring that, get that 2, and then bring down the 9. Okay. Not a fact family, but what's the most 5s I can get out of that 29? Yeah. 5. 5, because 5 times 5 is 25. Okay. 5 times 6 is 30, and that feels closer. It's just too large, okay? 5 times 5 is 25, and when we subtract that, we get 4. Nothing else to bring down. 4 is not big enough to do, you know, get another group, is it? So that becomes our remainder. And to check that, we would multiply 85 times 5. These two numbers right here, okay, 5 times 5 is 25, 5 times 8 is 40, plus 2 more is 42, but we have to add in what? We have to add in the remainder, which is 4, and we'll get 429, which is right there, okay? All right, I'm hoping... Seeing this even just one more time, just one time, each day, okay? If you're still, you know, not comfortable with where you are with this, if this is still a little bit of a struggle, do one at home every night. Do one. Hey, whoever at home, can you make me a division problem? You know, have them write it for you if you don't want to make one up yourself. And practice. Even just doing one or two a day or one or two at night. You don't have to do a whole worksheet for it to help you. Just do one or two. Okay. All right, we're going to stop there. We're actually going to take our marker, put the top on it, eraser, all that, just stack it and push it to the corner. We're going to use it later, but we're going to keep warming up for just a second. I guess normally we do this before the whiteboards come out, but uh, got just a little out of order, I guess, but it doesn't really matter if it's coming. Second. All right, so this is a sprint, and if you would put it where side B is looking up at you, you put your name on side B. Side B, if you need to go, go quick. Okay. Make sure your name is up there. As you're looking at this, what 
kind of problems are you seeing? Force. Division and multiplication. So watch your sign. It is going to change at times. Okay, so watch your sign uh, so you know which type of problem you're doing. Let's pull up the timer. We'll have two minutes for this. Um, oh, it is on timer. Let's go down two. Okay. Any questions or any? We're good? Everybody's good? Okay. Ready? And flip it over. Flip it over. Make sure you're on side A. Stop and put your pencil down. All right, we're going to check over this. So here we go. Just put a check mark if it's correct. We're not writing in any answers here. All right, here we go. Eight. Yes. Twelve. Yes. Sixteen. Yes. Twenty. Yes. Four. Yes. Two. Yes. Three. Yes. Five. Yes. Four. Yes. yes. Four. Yes. Twenty-four. Yes. Twenty-eight. Yes. Thirty-two. Yes. Thirty-six. Yes. Forty. Yes. Eight. Yes. Seven. Yes. Nine. Yes. Six. Yes. Ten. Yes. Five. Yes. And six. Yes. Next column. Ten. Yes. Two. Yes. Three. Yes. Ten. Yes. Five. Yes. Four. Yes. Two. Yes. Three. Yes. Four. Yes. Seven. Yes. Nine. Yes. Eight. Yes. Seven. Yes. Nine. Yes. Six. Yes. Eight. Yes. Forty-four. Yes. Eleven. Yes. Three. Yes. Twelve. Yes. Fifty-six. Yes. And fourteen. Yes. Okay. You know when you get to the very, very bottom, there's usually one or two right there that's like, whoa. You know? The All right, so under well, I was going to say, what question helps you with 43? The question under it. 44. And so if you kind of see that pattern happening, look around. Maybe, you know, that's called being resourceful, using what you have in front of you to help you. Okay? It's not cheap. Now, sometimes I will look at that, even when I'm looking over it, and make sure, is that really the answer? You know, because now I know how to set up 14 and 4, stack them up vertically, and do the multiplication, and it, and it is 56, okay? All right, so now we're kind of really warmed up. You know what the other side is going to be like, all right? So here we go, take a breath. Okay, ready, and flip it over.
let's check side B. Here we go. Four? Yes. Eight? Yes. Twelve? Yes. Thirteen? Yes. Twenty? Yes. Column done. Still follow along with us because it can help you. All right? Two. Yes. Ten. Yes. Three. Yes. Two. Yes. Four. Yes. Ten. Yes. Five. Yes. Three. Yes. Three. Yes. Six. Yes. Nine. Yes. Seven. Yes. Eight. Yes. Nine. Yes. Six. Yes. Seven. Yes. Forty-four. Yes. Eleven. Yes. 48, yes. 12, yes. 52, yes. 13. Yes. Okay. So up at the top where you're writing how many you've gotten correct. Okay. How many of you improved on side B from side A? How many of you made some improvement? Okay. Two. All right. Some of you are finishing it completely and yeah. And, and I get that. You can't improve from that. Uh, but you can maintain it, which means, you know, I can get the same amount correct. Okay? How many of you improved by one or two? Just one or two? Good. That's improvement. What about three or four? Good. How many of you improved by five or six? How many of you improved by seven or more? Okay. Good. Okay. Good for you. All right. Go ahead and put this into pocket of your reminder and we will jump into what we're working on today. Okay. So let's look at our learning target here. These slides are going to look slightly different. Remember, we said that for this week and next week, we're pulling something. Not next week. We won't be here next week, but the week after. The next school week, okay? Um, we're pulling some things from some third grade materials. Not because we think y'all are third graders. We know better than that. It's just if you never heard something that you need to know, you need to hear it, don't you? I mean, and we left school last year about the time that I think some of you were getting some of these fraction lessons and might not have been able to go as far as we were hoping you would. And so we wanted to make sure you might already know a lot of this, but we wanted to make sure you did. Okay. So this says I can build non-unit fractions less than one whole from unit fractions. Okay. I kind of wrote it in a short way over here as well. We're going to examine unit fractions. We're going to build non-unit fractions from unit fractions. Are you noticing anything that we might need to make sure we know that keeps showing up? What have I said multiple times? Yeah. No. That word's not in any of that. Yeah. Unit fractions. Exactly. Okay. If I'm going to examine unit fractions, build non-unit fra non fractions from unit fractions, um, and then over here I can build non-unit fractions less than one whole from unit fractions. Yeah, we keep hearing that phrase. 
So if we keep hearing that phrase, probably would be a good idea to know what a unit fraction is. And so today is mainly about, I know that's a unit fraction. I want you to know what it looks like, what it is, because we're going to use it multiple, multiple times for lots of different things. Okay? All right. Now, before we ever start, does anybody remember what a unit fraction is? Okay. It's kind of just like... Super, super simple, but at the same time, if you don't know that's what it is, you want to you get a guess? What? Is it like the parts? Is it the what? The parts of the fraction. Well, it's a, it's a fraction, so it has all the parts, okay? So it, it's, it's, a, it's a certain fraction, I guess you could say, yeah. So, like, if you had the number line, would it be, like... How many parts are in the twenty? Like no, no. Y'all are giving me some good, some good guesses here, but no. Um, not saying it's not a part of that, but that's not really what the definition is of a unit fraction. All right, so let's just jump into what a unit fraction is. Um, we're not doing their fluency. We already did our own. Let's. I'm wondering if this is maybe let's just use this space right here and so I'm not going back and forth all right so yesterday we saw fractions uh, for the first time in fourth grade we worked with them with manipulatives that we had on our desk and then we saw a few slides on the board and I put a fraction on the board basically so we could talk about it okay one half is probably one of the most common fractions that we see and know. Okay, um, you've probably heard half the word half in much younger grades than when, when you ever were starting fractions. Okay, but we looked at this fraction so we would know the parts. Okay, both of those numbers have a name. Okay, what what are those? Let's let's. This is the very basic stuff we need to know. Tell me one of them. Numerator. All right, which one is the numerator? The top one. Okay, and he's correct. This one right here is the numerator. Okay, it's the number that sits on the top. Okay. All right, so Valerie, what would the number on the bottom be? Denominator. Denominator. Okay. Good. I'm not writing too well today. Denominator. Okay. Now, it's real easy when we get going and we get busy with fractions and we've known them for a little while to say the top number and the bottom number, and I do it too. Okay. But we're going to try our best to use our fourth grade language and call this what it is, the numerator and the denominator. I want you to be so familiar with those words that you, you automatically know what they are. Because if you're reading directions one day and they're asking you to do something with the numerator or do something with the denominator, you need to know which number they're talking about working with. Okay? All right. So can we remember what these mean? All right. This number is here for a reason. And this number is here for a reason. Okay? We need to know what those numbers mean. What do you think? You want to give it a guess? It's like Okay, the denominator, guys, is going to tell you how many pieces are in the, in the whole. Total, I'm going to, y'all do know that that's not, that, that means number, not just hashtag. Y'all are living in a different world then. Okay, total number of parts. This is how many pieces are in the whole thing. Okay. All right, what about the top number? Yeah. The numerator is like how many parts have been shaded in. Okay. It might be shaded in. It might be the, the amount that you have. It might even be the amount you don't have sometimes, okay? Um, depending on how the question is worded, okay? So this is how many parts that you have. This is the total number of parts that there are. Okay, so one half is a unit fraction, 
or which of these pizzas? I wish this was written a little differently, a little larger so you could see it a little better. But this fraction goes with which pizza? Okay, which one? Okay, the one that's cut in half. Okay. All right, one half, okay, we've used one half to talk about the numbers, okay? But I want you to also know that one half is a unit fraction, okay? This pizza is cut into the unit halves, okay? The unit is halves because there are two pieces, okay? This one, I'm going to need about three or four other hands today. This one, the unit for this hole, you know, here's the hole, but the unit for this hole is thirds. Thirds. Because this hole is cut into three pieces. It's cut into thirds. All right, so a unit fraction for this would be one third. Okay. All right, so let's just use a real board. Okay, so for thirds, for halves, the unit fraction is this. For thirds, the unit fraction looks like that. Okay, let's see it just a couple more times. All right. I don't know why I feel like I, like I have to pull it off the board. Just started doing that. I'm <laughs> fixing to not be able to do that. Okay. <laughs> now it doesn't look like a hole anymore, does it? Let's try putting it back on the board. Okay. I'm going to pull it apart a little bit more so that we can see the pieces. Okay. So this, this one, okay. This hole is cut into how many pieces, everybody? Fourths. Four pieces, so they are fourths, okay? And so the unit fraction for fourths would be one fourth, okay? We're going to add that to our list over here. One fourth, okay? All right, so this particular set of fractions does not have one for every number. There's not fifths. There's sixths, though, okay? So if we looked at this pizza right here that was cut into six pieces, what's the If I asked you, what is the unit for this whole, because this is one whole, if we have all of it, what's the unit for this one? Well, what? Six. Six because it's cut into six pieces, okay, this one. But the unit fraction for it is one-sixth, one okay. So we're, we're basically learning some new words, some new vocabulary for this, this thing called fractions, okay. Now, could I put one up here for fifths? Yeah. Let's say we had a pizza that was cut into fifths. What would its unit fraction look like? Miranda? One-fifth. One-fifth. And for sixths, one sixth. And we could keep going with sevenths, eighths, uh, on and on and on and on. Okay? All right, so the unit is how many pieces the whole thing's been cut into, but a unit fraction. What can you tell me about these unit fractions? What is something maybe that's similar between all of them? Look at them. One half, one third, one fourth, one fifth, one sixth. What's something that's similar between all of them? Charlotte, what? What do you think? Do they have anything that's the same? They all have a one. That's exactly what I was hoping somebody would say. They have a one on the top. Your unit fraction is always going to have a one for its numerator. Okay? That's, that's how you know it's a unit fraction. So when we come over here and we look at this, it says we're going to be building some 
non-unit fractions from unit fractions, okay? So a non-unit fraction would have what on top? Or would not have what on top, okay? It doesn't have a one on top, but a unit fraction does, okay? Now, once you see us start working with unit fractions, I think it's very simple to work with them, okay? But you've got to realize what the unit fraction is and what the unit fraction is not, okay? All right, let's keep going here. So, some basic stuff today. Now, it says this is one whole, okay? This is like our third pizza right here green one okay what is it partitioned into now partition what do you think that means anytime you get a word that might be new like that look for clues inside of it look at this part of the word okay look at that part of the word what do you think that means yeah it has something to do with parts if something is partitioned it's what yeah, how is it divided? What, what are the parts that's cut, it, cut into? You might hear that word more with like, we took this giant room and we partitioned it into four different spaces. And maybe they brought in some big dividers somehow, you know. And it's just It just means we've cut it into pieces, basically. Okay? So this is one whole. What is it partitioned into? What unit is it cut into? Okay? What unit? Here are units. Halves, thirds, fourths, fifths, sixths. Okay, look at this. One whole. What unit is it partitioned into? Yeah. Thirds. thirds. Exactly. It's got three pieces. It's partitioned or cut into three pieces. Okay? Three equal size pieces. I can't just grab a you know, this and go, hey, look at there. Oh, no. Look at there. Like We've got thirds. thirds. We really don't do it. Okay. Like a baseball. If you don't have okay. <laughs> but they've got to be equal piece, equal size pieces. More, they're okay. Not equal now. All right. So we know that this is thirds. All right. Now, you're taking a lot in right now. In a little bit, you're going to be doing some of this on your board. So we want to just take it in right now. Okay. All right. Now, this tells us to shade one-third, okay? So they took the one hole, and they've had to make it a little more egg-shaped because they're trying to fit everything on the page, okay, on the slide, I mean. So that circle, it's supposed to look like a circle. It got a little squished, look, look, looking like an egg, but that's okay. They had thirds. They shaded one-third, okay? Here is one-third. Ah, a unit fraction. Now, what their the, their language is a di little bit different than how I would say it to you. If I wanted you to take this and to turn one third into two thirds, I would just say shade another piece. Okay. The way they say it today is make a copy and shade one more unit. Make a copy. Yeah, I think what they mean is just. Just like you did here, we're going to shade a whole other one. We're going to make a copy of this over here. Okay. So I just want you to know that in case you hear that or read that on your problem set. So now make a copy and shade one more unit. So what they're trying to show you is they are building this out of unit fractions. Each of these is a unit fraction. They took two of them now. So this is one third. Well, if I make a copy of something, does it look the same or does it look different? Exact same. Exact same. So this is also going to be one-third. All right, so let's do some thinking here. If I've got one-third and then I get another third, how many thirds do I now have? Two-thirds. I have two-thirds. Okay? I have two-thirds. So this one-third and one more one-third is now equal to two-thirds. Okay? We have just built a non-unit fraction. Is two-thirds a unit fraction? No. No, because what's on the top of it? A two. A two is in the numerator position. So we have just built a non-unit fraction. 
okay? From unit fractions, this is one third, this is one third. You can see they're unit fractions when they're just one third, but when we bring them together, we've got two thirds and it's not a unit fraction anymore, it's two thirds, okay? So, one third becomes, it's like a magician. Thank you, I'll be here all week. It sounds like the guy on the turbo. One shadow. Yeah. That didn't work. That did. Gotta be closer. Yeah. I'll work on my act just a little bit. Need, need the bunny in, in the hat or something. Okay. You won the basketball game. All right, let's keep going. All right, so again, they're just showing you what they created. The egg has now gone and stretched back out. So now we have our two thirds. Okay, the non-unit fraction. All right, now. We're going to see shapes of all kinds when it comes to our fractions. Okay, so they've taken a rectangle here and they've divided it into a certain unit. Okay, I want you to count up what unit they've divided that rectangle into. Quietly. Do yourself. Okay. What unit have they divided that rectangle into? Martin, what? One eight. Well, just what unit? Uh, eight. You think eight? Anybody agree or disagree with Martin? Okay. I have to be careful, and you do too. Good job. When you are counting these, always make a note of where you start so you don't keep counting and keep counting and keep counting. It's easy here because one of them is darker, but... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we know that the unit is eight. How many is shaded right now? One. One eighth is shaded. Okay. And that one eighth is our unit fraction. All right. So it says shade one unit. That's been done. Now shade four more units. Okay. So if we did that, and I'm going to let them be this color so we can tell which ones and this is a quick work shading I'm not trying to color it perfectly but I'm but I'm also not scribbling all over the place okay so now I've shaded four more to build a non-unit fraction okay what non-unit fraction have I just built what have I made Five what? Five eighths, he says. One, two, three, four, five. Is there still eight pieces in the hole? Yeah. Yeah, that hasn't changed. First we had one of the eight pieces colored, shaded. Now we have five of the eight pieces shaded, okay? So, just showing you how we're using unit fractions today. All right, so on your board, this is what I want you to try, okay? All right, let me say this, too. At, at, during this time of using fractions, working with fractions, there's going to be times that we are drawing shapes on our board, okay? But this is what I get a lot of times. Here, let me start again. You know... Okay, she said to, oh, you're not drawing anything yet, so make sure you mark your stamp. Okay. Um, okay, she said to draw a circle. I'm going to cut it into four pieces. Oh, that's crooked. Circle, cut it into four pieces. <laughs> Okay, do you see why we run out of ink sometimes? Yeah, okay. And, and, and I'm being silly, but I've watched this for years now, okay? We are not going to draw perfectly, and we don't have the time to draw it perfectly, okay? So we're going to get it as best we can. If it's a little wiggly, a little off, it's going to be a little wiggly, a little off, and leave it there, okay? Nobody can draw. All right, no. Now, 
that's the hard thing about this is because in fractions you want the pieces to be equal and so we try to do the best we can but even when I show you something on the board it's not always going to be perfectly drawn we're going to have to understand that okay so what I want you to do first is this um, where did it go all right I want you to draw listen to what I'm saying I'm not telling you to write the fraction I'm telling you to draw a unit fraction okay you're going to draw a shape you're going to cut it into equal pieces and you're going to shade how many of them to show a unit fraction okay all right so let me give you a minute to see how you come up with Right. Now, what, what, what fraction? What, what unit? What you can pick? Okay. We have to pick one of those on there, or can we do? No, but I wouldn't choose millionths right now. Yeah, I know millionths. Yeah. So I'm going to give us about a minute to do this. Okay. It does not matter if you're showing this with a rectangle, or a circle, or a square. I would choose something relatively easy though, okay, something you can draw quickly, and you're going to show a unit fraction with what you've drawn, okay. did you have? You had one half. She had the triangle that she cut right down the center and she had shaded one half of that. What did you have? Oh, okay. What's your unit fraction? One fourth. One fourth of his circle is shaded. What did you have? One eighth. One eighth. One eighth of his circle shaded. Okay. I don't know if everybody saw all the way completely across the room. Um, Joe, what did you have? circle and you colored in or shaded in how much of it? One fourth. Good. What did you have? One eighth. One fourth. One fourth. One eighth. One fourth. One fourth. One fourth. One fourth. One fourth. One fourth. One half. One half. You get it shaded. Did you get it shaded? I just get. I might not get this. One fourth. One fourth. One fourth. I think one fourth won the popularity contest today, but uh, and that's just an easy one to show. It's also a pretty, pretty simple one to draw most of the time. Okay, great job. So now this is what I want you to do. I don't erase it. Okay. All right. Listen to the directions, and if you've erased it, you're going to have to put it back. Now I want you to do this. Listen. One time up here, we had one of the pieces shaded in, and we we shaded just one more to make two-thirds, remember? Then another time right here, we had one-eighth, and we shaded four more, okay? I, you've got one shaded. I want you to choose a number to shade. You might choose one more. You might choose three more. You might choose two more. Seven. Okay. Um... Choose a number, and I want you to shade that many more pieces, and then write the fraction that you have. Okay? So 
shade a few more of your pieces. You choose how many. And then write your new fraction. more seconds to do that. Make sure you've written your new fraction. We had one fourth or one half or one eighth earlier. Now you have a new fraction shaded. So write that fraction. Okay. All right. Bailey, what's your new fraction? Three fourths. Three fourths. Can you show us your board? Okay. Just going to hold it that way so they can. All right. Three fourths. Three of her circle is now shaded. Okay? Um, what you got over here? Three-fourths. Three-fourths, but it's a different shape. Alright, so now he's got three-fourths of his shaded. What have you got? Six-eighths of her circle is now shaded. Okay? Brandon, hold yours up. And you can just kind of turn it each way so people can see it. What, what is your new fraction? Um, Two-fourths. Two okay? Two-fourths. All right, what have you got? Three-eighths. Okay, show that. Three-eighths. Jayla, what have you got? Two-fourths. Two-fourths. Two you hold it up. What have you got? Seven-eighths. You hold it up. Okay, good. What have you got? Three-fourths. You hold it up. Okay. All right, I want to come right here. What have you got? Four-fourths. Can you hold that up? I'll turn it where they can see it. It's kind of, yeah. All right, she decided to color in all the rest of her. Some of you might have been tempted to do that, too. Um, let's do this. All right, this is just a kind of a separate point I'm making about this one. Okay, I'm going to draw this over just so we can see it a little bit better. How many pieces are shaded in? Four. Okay, how many pieces are in the whole thing? Four. I cannot remember with all the different things we did yesterday with fractions if we've made this point. But if you have any number over any number... Same number on the top and the bottom, the numerator and denominator, you have one whole, don't you? Yes. Okay, it does not matter if it's a million over a million. All that means is whatever it was was cut in a million pieces, and I have all of them there. This was cut into four pieces, and I have all of them shaded. Okay, four fourths is equal to one. Any fraction that has the same number on the top and the bottom, the numerator and denominator, is equal to 1. Okay? And that's going to be very important when we get into adding, subtracting our fractions, multiplying our fractions. We have got to know that. Okay? So a unit fraction has 1 on the top. A fraction like this where the same number is on top and bottom, that is equal to 1. 1 whole. Okay, if all four of my pieces of pizza are there, then I get the whole thing, right? Uh -huh. I love making myself a little mini pizza at home, and then I'll cut it in pieces, and I'm thinking, that whole thing's for me. <laughs> and then somebody will come up, can I have some pizza? But yeah. I have to eat it fast before they come in the room. Miss Wayne, yeah. imagine, um, what's it called, you made a pizza, and okay. you cut it up into eight pieces. And you ate it all to yourself. It's going to be like every single one on there, but with more pieces. Mm -hmm. Now, just because the denominator, remember yesterday, just because the denominator gets larger, does that mean you have more? No. 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 A larger denominator means a smaller uh, piece, uh, yeah. okay? The more we cut this, the smaller the pieces became, okay? 
I'm just glad that I didn't have 100 people come to the house. Uh, uh, <laughs> God, um, that's all we got. We're going to cut it into 100 pieces. Okay. That's just random little pieces of people. Yeah. It's, it's like a, um, it's just stick a little toothpick in it. It'd be like a little hors d'oeuvre, you know, a little, here's your snack. You know, when you go to like Sam's or Walmart and have a little yeah. free, free samples they hand them out. They don't have them anymore. No, they're not. Cause Probably cause not right now. Probably not, not right now. now. Okay. All right, let me show you. I tell you what, let's do this. Um, we don't have a new workbook to get out. We don't have an old workbook to get out. I know that you still have your old workbook. I'm going to collect those in the next day or so. Um, I don't have the new one to hand you yet because I don't want you to get confused and think we're working in it yet. We'll get it when we start the fourth grade lesson. Um, I do have a problem set run off for, me, for you, okay? And I do want to show you what to do with it, but let's take our break right quick. And um, then we will come back and start that. Okay.